Namaste friends. My name is Ritesh Patel and I am a senior lecturer and senior teacher at Yoga FX International Yoga Teacher Training Academy. But it seems I am still a student learning and exploring as always. I am really thrilled to be present you an excellent series of anatomy physiology lectures. Today we are talking about the skeletal system. We really hope that you enjoy and please feel free to keep sending your emails if you have any questions and really looking forward to seeing you soon. Let's get started. Appendicular skeleton anatomy. There are total of 126 bone in the appendicular skeleton. It consists of the bone that make up the arms and legs as well as the bones that attach them to the axial skeleton. The pectoral girdle. The pectoral girdle is where the arms attach to the axial skeleton. It's made up of the clavicular, that is your collarbone and scapula, shoulder blade. There are two of each of these, one for each arm. Upper limbs. Each arm contains 30 bones known as the humerus. The humerus is the long bone in the upper arm. It is located between the elbow joint and the shoulder. At the elbow, it connects primarily to the ulna as the forearm's radial bone, connects to the wrist. At the shoulder, the humerus connects to the frame of the body via the glenoid fossa of the scapula. The humerus is the foundation to which many muscles insert, such as the deltoid, the pectoralis major and others. Because the humerus connects at the shoulder with a rotational joint, the humerus is instrumental in supporting many of the arm functions. For example, the humerus supports all lifting and physical activities. The humerus is one of the longest bone in the body. This means it is also one of the most commonly broken or fractured. The radius. The radius or the radial bone is one of the two large bones of the forearm. The other being the ulna. It extends from the lateral side of the elbow to the thumb side of the wrist and runs parallel to the ulna. The ulna is usually slightly longer than the radius, but the radius is thicker. Therefore, the radius is considered to be the larger of the two. It is a long bone, prism shaped and slightly curved longitudinally. The radius is part of two joints, the elbow and the wrist. At the elbow, it joins with the capitulum of the humerus in a separate region with the ulna and the radial notch. At the wrist, the radius forms a joint with the ulna bone. The ulna is a long bone found in the forearm that stretches from the elbow to the smallest finger and when in anatomical position is found on the medial side of the forearm. It runs parallel to the radius, the other long bone in the forearm. The ulna is usually slightly longer than the radius, but the radius is thicker. Therefore, the radius is considered to be the larger of the two. Carpals. The carpal bones are the eight small bones that make up the wrist or carpus that connects the hand to the forearm. The term carpus is derived from the Latin carpus and the Greek word means wrist. In human anatomy, the main role of the wrist is to facilitate effective positioning of the hand and powerful use of the extensors and flexors of the forearm. And the mobility of individual carpal bone increases the freedom of movements at the wrist. Metacarpals. The metacarpals are long bones within the hand that are connected to the carpals or wrist bones and to the phalanges of finger bones. The metacarpals together are referred to as the metacarpus 
the tops of the metacarpals from the knuckles where they join to the wrist on the palm side they are covered with connective tissue you can feel and see the metacarpals on the back of your hand through your skin the five metacarpals are called thumb metacarpal index metacarpal middle metacarpal ring metacarpal and the small metacarpal 10% of all fractures that occur are those to the metacarpal and phalanges. The most common injuries being from car accidents, sports injuries and work related injuries. The goal in repairing these injuries is to do so while maintaining strength of hand, grip and no residual pain upon using the hand. Boxers tend to have high incidence of fracture to the metacarpals. Hence the term boxer's fracture. Phalanges. The phalanges of the hand are the group of small bones that comprise the bone core of the digits, that is your fingers, of the hand. Even though the phalanges are small in size, they are classified as long bones because of their structural characteristics. Each phalanx consists of a shaft, distal head, and a proximal base. There are 14 phalanges in each hand. Each of the medial four digits has three phalanges, proximal, middle, and distal, while the thumb has only two, proximal and distal. The digits have a universal labeling system going from the lateral to the medial, the lateral to the medial. They are named as the thumb, digit one, index finger digit 2, middle finger digit 3, ring finger digit 4 and the little finger digit 5. Pelvic girdle. Functions of the pelvic. The strong and rigid pelvic is adapted to serve a number of roles in human body. The main functions being transfer of weight from the upper axial skeletal to the lower appendicular components of the skeleton, especially during movements, provides attachment for a number of muscles and ligaments used in locomotion, contains and protects the abdominal, pelvic and pelvic viscera. The pelvic girdle, commonly known as the hip, is where the leg attached to the axial skeleton. It is made up of two hip bones, one for each leg. Each hip bone consists of three parts, known as the ilium. The ilium is the top portion of each bone. Ischium. The ischium is a curved bone that makes up the base of each hip bone. Pubis. The pubis is located in the front part of the hip bone. The bony pelvic consists of the two hip bones, also known as innominate or pelvic bones, the sacrum and the coccyx. There are four articulations with the pelvic. Sacroiliac joint between the ilium of the hip bone and the sacrum. The sacrococcygeal symphysis between the sacrum and the coccyx. Pubic symphysis between the pubis bodies of two hip bones. Ligaments attached to the lateral border of the sacrum to various bony landmarks on the bony pelvis to aid stability. Lower limbs. Each leg is composed of 30 bones known as the femur. Femur. The femur is the only bone located within the human thigh. The femur is the longest, heaviest and strongest bone in the human body, extending from the hip to the knee. The human femur can resist forces of 1,800 to 2,500 pounds, so it is not easily fractured. A break in this bone can only result from a large amount of force such as a car accident or a fall from an extreme height. Such an injury can take three to six months to heal. Tibia. 
The tibia is also known as shin bone, is a long bone of the leg, found medial to the fibula. It is also the weight bearing bone of the legs, which is why it is the second largest bone in the body after the femur. The fun fact here is that tibia is the Latin word for tubular, that is a musical instrument like the flute. They were sometimes made from the tibial bones of the animals. So the length of the tibia was useful in many ways, other than just for bearing body weight while walking. Like other long bones, there are three parts of the tibia, proximal, shaft and distal. The proximal part participates in the knee joint, whereas the distal part contributes to the ankle joint. The tibial shaft, on the other hand, offers many sites for leg muscle attachment. Fibula The fibula is the long, thin and lateral bone of the lower leg. It runs parallel to the tibia or shin bone and plays a significant role in stabilizing the ankle and supporting the muscles of the lower legs. Compared to the tibia, the fibula is about the same length but is considerably thinner. The difference in the thickness corresponds to the varying role of the two bones. The tibia bears the body weight from the knee to the ankle, while the fibula merely functions as a support for the tibia. Many muscles of the thigh and lower leg attach to the fibula through tendons. One of the hamstrings the bicep femoris muscle has its insertion at the head of the fibula and pulls on the fibula to flex the leg at the knee joint. Eight other muscles, including the three fibularis, that is peroneus muscle, the soleus and several flexors and extensors of the toes have their origin on the fibula as well. Patella the patella is commonly referred to as the kneecap. It is a small freestanding bone that rests between the femur that is thigh bone and tibia that is a shin bone. The femur has a dedicated groove along which the kneecap slides. As a form of protection, both bones are containing cartilage, strong flexible tissue in the areas near the patella. The kneecap plays a vital role in how the knee bends in addition to most motions that require movement of the legs. If the patella or the tendon associated with it becomes injured, a person will experience difficulty in walking, running, standing or engaging in athletic activity. If dislocated, the kneecap can no longer slide along the thigh bone groove, which can aggravate and damage cartilage on both the femur and the tibia. Dislocation and other traumatic injuries are common among athletes and other people who are extremely physically active. Injuries tend to be more pronounced in high impact sports. For example, patella related injuries are common in sports like football, mixed martial arts and wrestling. Tarsals. The tarsal bone of the foot are important in movement and much more. Where are these bones and what happens if a process such as a fracture occurs? The tarsal bone articulates with the bone of the metatarsus, a group of five long bone located between the tarsal bone and the phalanges that is your toe bone. The tarsus meets the ankle joint above which connects to the tibia and fibula bones of the leg. The tarsals are the seven bones that make up the ankle. Metatarsals. Metatarsals are five long bones in the foot found between the bones of the toes and the tarsal bones. Each metatarsal is attached to one of your toe. They are positions side by side in the shape of an arch which gives the foot its arch. They are important for maintaining balance when standing and walking. Phalanges. The phalanges are 14 bones that comprises the toes. Each toe has three phalanges, proximal, intermediate and distal, except the big toe which only has two phalanges. 
So finally, we complete the skeletal system. We really hope that you enjoyed it and please feel free to send any questions that you have. Stay tuned for my next lecture which will be on the muscular system. See you soon. Take care. Keep smiling. Namaste.